I'm elated that this next performer could come here tonight. This man right over here, he plays the resophonic guitar. Uh, you may know that as the Dobro. Dobro is actually a brand name, though, right? It's kind of like saying you make a Xerox copy, but it's, it's a Dobro, but it's a resophonic guitar. Um, Jimmy Goodrow brought to my attention that of all the instruments playing here tonight, most of them, I should say, they all came to this country with immigrants that brought their music, and, and uh, they, they, they were brought into this country before they became important parts of American acoustic music. But the resophonic guitar, there was Czech Czechoslovakian immigrants, came to California, right, Mike? And uh, they put a resonator and a Spanish guitar, and it was actually born then in the United States, and it becomes uh, an American-made instrument, American-invented in, uh, instrument. And I have to tell you, back in 1988, a good friend of mine, uh, who I was playing in a band with, gave me a CD called Eight String Swing. Not a CD, I shouldn't say that. They didn't have CDs back then. It was an album. <laughs> but I played this album over and over again, and I, and I had never heard music like this before. And, and because it was never done, he created a sound on this instrument. I'd heard the dobro before, and I've told them so many times, I've told this, today it's still one of my favorite discs. We still play it on uh, folk radio. It's still played, what, 23 years later. Now, I hope you have a lot of them now that I've built it up a lot. I want to buy them out in the lobby. Um, he's another teacher who has taught so many people this, this instrument. Um, and every important player on the music scene today that plays the dobro, they all play his licks. And he's taught so many of them. Billy Cardine, well, I, I, I don't know the whole list, but I know there are quite a few. And when you see them at these shows, they all refer to Mike. I learned this from Mike Aldridge, or I got this off a of CD. So it's, it's amazing that he's here with us tonight. He's a founding member of the Seldom Scene. Remember the Seldom Scene Bluegrass Band? He went on to play with an amazing number of award-winning groups. Also an Emmy Lou Harris band. Uh, you probably saw him if you've been to an Emmy Lou Harris concert in the past. Uh, I'm very happy that he's here tonight. This is Mike Aldridge. Thank you. As Art uh, was saying, um, the, the Dobro guitar was invented uh, actually in the, in the 1920s by a man uh, by the name of John Dopera, and he had uh, brothers that marketed the instrument, so they shortened their name Dopera Brothers to Dobro, and it became the, the trade name. And <clears throat> it was a way of amplifying, mechanically amplifying a guitar. This was before the invention of electric guitar. Um, there's a, um, an aircraft aluminum uh, a resonator inside this guitar. The strings are suspended over that. That's a, it makes it louder than a normal guitar. And it was a big hit among um, the Hawaiian players in the 20s, which was a, a big craze in, uh, in the American music scene, as well as um, what was known then as hillbilly music. And uh, the, one of the first guys that did the uh, a big sales in hillbilly music was uh, a man by the name of Jimmy Rogers, and my uncle, 
by the name of Ellsworth Cousins, uh, was his first steel guitar player. So uh, it's always been uh, a great source of pride to me that m my uncle was the first session steel player in country music. I thought that was very cool. <laughs> and they did things like, uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy Rogers did, um, uh, I'm just going to do little snatches of songs here. Um, And uh, the, uh, yeah. the next big hillbilly star uh, was a, a guy named Roy Acuff, and, and he had a guy named Pete Kirby with it, was his uh, dobro player. This was in the, in the late 30s and early 40s. And um, his big hit was... Uh, First time I heard that leg. I thought that was the coolest thing I ever heard when I was about 10 years old. And, um, but, <clears throat> so that was in the late 30s, early 40s. And by this time, the electric guitar had taken over, the electric steel guitar had taken over in hillbilly music. And it started becoming known as country music. And, um, but there were a few guys that, that hung on to the dobro guitar, and the, the most, uh, my favorite of the four or five people that were recording in those years was a man by the name of Buck Graves. He worked with Wilma Lee and Stoney Cooper in the uh, 40s, and then the, the huge thing that he did was in 1955, he joined the bluegrass band of Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs and the Foggy Mountain Boys. And it was the first time that anybody had ever played a steel guitar in a bluegrass band. Um, Bill Monroe hated steel guitars. And so uh, <clears throat> the Flatt and Scruggs and Bill Monroe were on the outs, and uh, they thought, I know what, let's get a steel guitar. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and Earl Scruggs had this uh, the three finger roll thing going, and, and um, uh, Josh, by this time, by the way, he had to join the band as a clown um, because you know, <laughs> in order to play steel guitar in a bluegrass band, he also had to be a clown. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, suspenders and pants up to here and a pork pie hat. And, but, uh, <laughs> but he picked up on Earl Scruggs' three-finger roll and uh, doing things like... Uh, Thing from uh, Josh, uh, Josh Graves, Graves that I could for, for a number of years. And, um, it dawned on me after a while, I was trying to find something a little bit different, and uh, <clears throat> it occurred to me that if I tuned the, 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 the guitar is tuned in, in two triads of G, but if I tuned this bottom G down to an E, the sixth of the G chord, it would give me a minor chord at the same fret that the major chord was played. Uh, it's kind of a limited instrument because you just have a, just a, strict, a straight chord at every fret. But if you, then I could get a, this, this minor thing happening. So I, I recorded a few things. What, I, what I'll do here is play a, a medley of a, half a dozen songs or so. Uh, 
uh, using that tuning, and I'll mix in some other things that I've recorded over the years.
Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> then a few years later, it occurred to me, actually, I took up the pedal steel guitar, and, and uh, I loved the things that I could do on, on um, the sixth tuning, one of the necks of the double neck pedal steel. And I thought, you know, I could put that on a dobro, so I had a guy make me a first to ten string dobro, because that's what a pedal steel is. But it didn't really work out for me, so I, I had him make me an eight string dobro. And um, Art was mentioning this eight string swing album that I did 20 years ago, <laughs> and uh, I did a lot of things that I wanted to do on a, on a six string guitar I could never pull off because it just, the range wasn't there. So I'll finish up with this one. Well, that was pretty.